Hello everyone, I apologize for late video release. Just know it's because it was quite some research and the fact that I'm juggling a few different things in my life, and lastly because I'm a lazy fuck. Anyway, a bit of a disclaimer here. This video is not saying Games Workshop ripped off real life with these three characters. Now don't get me wrong. You could also say that some of them were inspired off of it. I, I wouldn't be too surprised if they were inspired off of it. This video is more of like, oh hey, I wonder who these guys could be compared to in real life. I don't know, it was just food for thought I had. And, well, now now I'm going to shove it down your throat. Like, for example, the first man of the hour, Gorstalton. Now, considering that he was kind of attempted to be murdered the same way Rasputin was, I, th I think it's kind of obvious he's supposed to be kind of Rasputin-like. Like, it's kind of inspired, quote-unquote, inspired off of Rasputin. This man was, both him and Rasputin, were thrown into the river, well, poisoned, shot, and then thrown into the river. But Kostalton lived. He was like, dying? That's kind of cringe, no. Urson would not approve. And he also got, like, stabbed in the gut, like, I think two times when fighting Beastmen, if I'm right? I think it was two times. And while he's definitely inspired off of Rasputin, I think in terms of his actual character, he's very, like, really similar to Lenin, to the point where I would say he might even be inspired off. He might might be inspired off of Lenin. I can't say for sure. But you have a lot of stuff like how Torstalton is idealistically against the current crown in Warhammer 3, specifically he is. I think he is in the books as well. He leads an army against the crown, convincing people to join his ideals. He's a fervent and you could say fanatical, devout follower of his ideals, preaching them as if it was a gospel, a holy factual truth that his own people are blind to as they are led astray by the crown. But if you like mix in the unkillable of Rasputin and like the fervent fanaticalism of Lenin, you, you kind of have Kostaltin. Now Kostaltin also like leads and fights like with people against chaos as well. So you also have that. <clears throat> you could also say his revolution against the crown. While, so while Katarina is seen as the older times, the leader of a dying age, Kostaltin, he sounds like a crazy fanatic, yes, but his ideals have him at the forefront and the man who leads Kislev's people against the Tsarina. But Lenin was more of a for the people and power to the people kind of guy. Kostaltin was much more of a, yeah, I I'm for the people, but not power to them. He, th like I said, there's not really much in this guy or really Boris or even Katarina. I don't think they have much depth to them. But it seems when you factor in Warhammer 3 specifically, he cares about power to the church, not really to the people. And he wants power over people's lives and Kislevites living in his ideal. Like a system that determines he is right and his ideals are right. And while Kostaltin seems to not really care about their suffering, he doesn't really seem to care much about their suffering. He seems more like more of like, oh, uh, I care more about Kislev and you have to suffer for Kislev. Especially his fanatical fascination with Urson. Alright, up next we have Katarina. So you can probably see in the video section this thing on that the video section is this thing that's on YouTube that I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna try to put it anyway. There ain't much to her. Like I like I said, I try to find lore in this chick and I found lore, but it's really just like, oh, Kislev gets steamrolled. I stand against chaos. I go down Charge Hill, die. That's it. That that's like her lore. Like there's some little things that happen, but it's pretty much just, oh no, defend Kislev. Chaos is stampeding us. That's pretty much it. I don't, I think in, I'm pretty sure in Laura Kostaltin and Katarina hated each other. Especially with how he's trying to consolidate power for his church and he, he's going to rally the people against her. Which really just plays more into Kostaltin's Lenin trope than really her character, what little characters he has at all. And you might think, okay, so Nina Katarin, she might be Catherine the Great. But I mean, that was my first guess too, but no, 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 she ain't, bro. I, d I looked up other like Russian queens and Polish queens. I can only find one Polish queen, uh, Jag Jagowiga, I'm so sorry I'm not pronouncing that right. Now researching Catherine the Great was pretty difficult because you see, uh, there's this one problem I had researching her, is that nobody puts their damn references anymore. For this whole ass video project, I had to check dozens of different websites and only like a handful of them actually had their references instead of not having any and pretty much just saying, hey bro, my source, trust me bro, I got this. It's like, bro, I, I, can't, I can't trust you then, bro. I can't trust you then. So for this part, I really just decided to make the video more interesting. And all those next facts about Catherine the Great are mainly just from Britannica, because like I said, I had a lot of trouble cross-checking websites for it. So if you're fine with that, great. If not, I don't blame you. Just know that Britannica is like seen as a reliable source, and like a lot of colleges in the Western world will say, okay, this source is good. So, eh. 
take with that what you will. But on to Catherine. Yes, she was in the Civil War. Yes, she was supported by like the enlightened elements of Russian aristocratic society, but she wasn't she was known as a very liberal person and cultured woman of Russia. Yes, she was married, but no, she didn't kill her husband. The public just pinned it on her. She also had a coup, and like she used the coup to get into power. She also made like the serfs. The, well, she made Ukrainian serfs, so she made most peasants serfs by the end of her reign. Which, I mean, she helped the economy at least, there's that. But I mean, I don't know, bro. Serf down ain't exactly a hot time, bro. So you can see there's not really much stuff to like link between her and Katerina here. But I will talk about the great Khan Queen, who Katerina is supposed to be a reincarnation of. And so I'll tell you what, I did a lot of research on this woman. I had to watch like the Net General's like lore videos on it. And I'm, I'm okay, bro, listen. I'm 100% certain, okay, like 99% certain, that the Khan Queen, aka Miska, the slaughterer, it's Prince Oleg the Viking. Source, trust me, bro. You might be thinking, the fuck? A Viking, you crackhead? Yes, but trust me, bro, a Viking. So pretty much, Prince Oleg. Like Miska, united the tribes to form the Kievan Rus, and he became the prince of it. And then, uh oh, eventually, the Mongols, oh, oh no! They kind of like, oh, I came. I saw, I conquered. They just blitzed through Russia. Miska kind of did the same thing to the Ungol tribe, and her, like, tribe of people kind of fused together with the Ungols. Now, at this point, you might think, oh, wait a minute, you might think. If, if Misko united the tribes to form an army like the Mongols did and overran and slaughtered and taken over the Mongols like the Mongols did to Russia, it didn't seem more of a Mongol leader. Hell, she's called the Great Khan Queen. Good question. I had the same. And I say no. Source, trust me, bruh. No, but in all seriousness, the Mongols and Miska are like conquered. And well, Miska. Ungols were conquered by Miska. She took the land from them, and they were like, no, but they were kind of nomadic, so they were just like, Miska was like, fuck it, go do your own damn thing. And eventually, her tribe of people fused together with the Ungols. Now, it's important to note that like 25 years into the war, they formed the city of Kislev, so Kislev was kind of already a thing. They still kind of like fused together once the war was over, making the modern, making the people of modern Kislev like a direct fusion of tribes. I think that's how it works. I'm a uh, I'm not too sure, I don't know Ancestry stuff. I ain't no Ancestry.com scholar, fuck you want with me. You might think, okay, that's a bit of a stress, but stretch, but Kislev is obviously a Russian stereotype. And the Kievan Rus was like the first Slavic state, 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 blah, state. And Kiev was like one of the first Russian cities after Novograd, which was founded by Oleg. Lastly, another reason to discredit Miska being a part of the Mongol horde is the chaos invasion, like really long after her death. Like how the Mongol invasion really long after Oleg's death. The chaos invasion can really be seen as like the Mongol invasion. The chaos invasion pillaged, oh, killed, and sold people into slavery. So here's the thing to note. I had a lot of trouble cross-checking uh, the atrocities the Mongols did. Like I said, a lot of websites didn't list their sources. So if the Mongols, because chaos, for example, would oh, kill women and children, and children, I'm pretty sure, they pillaged and kill innocents. I remember at one point it's described how they slammed babies' heads like into the brick wall. They hung up boys and men and used that as target practice. Already fucked up stuff. You know, just typical day in Warhammer Fantasy, you know. Just a typical Friday night with the boys. Me and my chaos boys going from Norska to invade the damn southern realms. I'm, I'm looking to find myself a wife. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. So, I don't know if the Mongols did all of those atrocities. I don't know if they ever went that far. Like, killing innocents, selling them to slavery, maybe. That, I cannot say for sure they did. Because as I said, I had trouble cross-checking the atrocities because one website would list, oh, XYZ happened, atrocity XYZ happened. However, they didn't list their sources and I deadass could not find things cross-checking it. Like, I found one atrocity, I would look for this atrocity, and in the middle of finding this atrocity, I would find a whole nother one. So, okay then. Well, what I can say, what probably happened with 99% accuracy was pillaging Call the ocean. At that time, even nowadays in war, that is still very common. It's fucked up, but it is true. So, I'm not saying the Mongols killed and sold people in slavery, I can't say that for sure. But I can say they did do a lot of fucked up stuff. And if they did atrocities, I would not be too surprised. And I can say that I don't think... What I'm trying to say with this part here specifically is I don't think 
you could say the chaos invasion was with the way the chaos treated civilians is the same way the Mongols treated them. That's a really big point I want to uh, discredit here. I don't want people to think that, oh, the chaos treated, the chaos invasion killed innocent little boys. So the Mongols did, no. I don't, I don't want people to think that. I don't know for sure what they did. I don't want to state any history that could have happened with an exception being like pillaging and raping, oh, because like I said, it was so damn rampant everywhere, even nowadays in war. It's so damn rampant. So now lastly, but not least for Kislev, is Boris Ursin. He was kind of known for like wanting to reclaim the land from goblins and monsters and shit. He built, he rebuilt Kislev's infrastructure, such as roads, bridges, and towns, as well as rebuilt the mercenary, like draining his army. Mercenary, rebuilt the military, draining his army, and hiring mercenaries to train Kislev's army. And then lastly, there's a whole like man x bear fanfic thing that happened where he fights and rides a big ass bear that's basically like his brother in the battle, brother in the battle. Bro, they're tight for real. So let, let's recap it, right? Reclaim lands, uh huh. Rebuild the empire and military and civilian, uh huh. Man x wild befriends a bear. Okay, that one's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find, but borderline, he's Casimir the Third of Poland. Slavic, check. Inherited the war ravaged nation, check. Built towns, castles, and churches. Check. He d almost doubled the size of the nation. Check. Well, if he doubled the size of the nation, he must have rebuilt the military. Now, as for the whole, like, man x bear wild thing, yeah, th there's nothing like that. I think it's kind of safe to say and kind of obvious. I did try doing research, as in, when I say research, I mean I googled, uh, king befriends wild animal. Nothing. I found, like, absolutely, like, nothing at all about the, any of that. And can you blame any king? What king would want to befriend a wild animal? Like, I mean, what person would want to do that, bro? For real. What sane individual? Okay, well, a lot of insane kings over the years. But still, I, I found, like, almost... I don't think I actually found anything at all. Now, you might be thinking, is that it? Anything else, bro? No, that's pretty much it for Boris. Boris, his whole thing is that, uh... Like I said, a lot of Warhammer characters are kind of just gimmicky. They kind of have one thing and they kind of stick to that. Boris's gimmick is, uh... I go ride, I go befriend bear, fight with bear, bear becomes friend, I, and I, uh, I go die with bear. That, that's pretty much it. Yeah, he won, yeah, he does the whole history of him, kind of, quote unquote history, like it's almost nothing. Of him wanting to like retake the lands and like re drain in his coffers for the, to rebuild kids love. But that's really it, and really everything else, especially since he's also Slavic. Everything else is, makes it think makes me think he's Casimir the Third of Poland. So uh, yeah, that's Boris and that's everyone. I guess I got nothing else to say. Thanks for this video. Thanks for watching the video. If you came this far, I uh, I want. Um, <laughs> thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if you have any constructive criticism, let me know. Don't be too harsh. I will cry. That is a threat. Uh, good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the pack bite.